What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the 182 News Podcast. This is your host, Poppin' Curbs, and we're back. It's been a minute. I've had a lot of life the past month, I'll tell you what. So, uh, obviously, if you follow me on Twitch, haven't been streaming much, kind of been low-key. Reason behind that is, about a month ago, I caught COVID. Uh, to be honest, kind of knocked me on my ass for about a week. And shortly after that, my wife has been sick. Uh, and really still is. So it's been a rough month. I've been on full-time dad duty. I don't know how single parents do it. It's crazy. Uh, really a good day for me. The past month has been finding eight and a half minutes to run a mile. A great day is finding about 18 minutes to run two miles and clear my head. So I haven't had time to even begin to think about a new episode until a couple days ago. Things are trending a little bit upwards for me uh, and the family. So happy to be back. I literally had to get a babysitter to have time to do this today. No place I would rather be. So we got a couple things to discuss that I touched base on on the last pod. First of all, the Angels and Airwaves tour overseas is unfortunately canceled. So I mentioned on the last episode, I was stoked for folks over there to get a chance to see them. This is kind of the extended Life Forms tour. Unfortunately, with the COVID situation and with just a handful of shows, probably smaller shows, I just don't know if logistically it made sense to do it. So for whatever reasons, that's not going to happen. I'm bummed for folks over there who were looking forward to that. You know, I hope maybe we get a Life Forms Deluxe along with the movie and they get over there sooner rather than later. Uh, the next thing I had mentioned on the last episode that we were looking forward to at that time was really about two years of looking forward to the next Mark Hoppus signature bass guitar. So there was a lot of hype around that. Everybody had been super stoked to see, you know, when it was going to come out, how many units, what the price was going to be. Um, long story short, that has launched in the past month. They sold out super, super quick. So they started with only 50. And I got to say, I'm a tad bit disappointed in the comments I was seeing surrounding this and really just what folks were, were commenting back and forth on this stuff. So... You know, I want to make sure everybody understands where they are on this. So, Hi, My Name is Mark is a very, very small clothing company. It's Mark's really lifestyle company, okay? A couple years ago, because Fender has stopped making his signature bass, being the rad folks they are, knowing that folks still wanted a, a bass of his and thought it would be rad, they took it upon themselves to figure out how to logistically pull this off through them solely, not through Fender, you know, going through their own website, you know, dealing with every aspect of this. And I got to say, that's a lot of work, a lot of things to figure out. So it really bummed me out. And I know what has gone into this, like I said, two years in the making of prototypes and figuring out who's going to make which piece and, and what parts uh, is Fender going to be providing and how long it's going to take to get it put together logistically. We finally get a date on this. We finally get the price on this. Everybody's looking forward to it. Understandably so, people are frustrated that they missed out. Now look, they had to start with 50 units. Mark has been upfront about this the whole time. Essentially, they are fronting the money for this, having no idea what the demand is, and they would adjust and go forward accordingly. So they started with 50. They were gone super quick. You know, I, I totally understand folks being a little bummed and frustrated that they missed out. However, all along, Mark has said, and hi, my name is Mark has said, they're going to continue making these as long as there is demand. So if you were the one putting this together, you don't want to order, you know, 500 of these and have to pay $500,000 out of your pocket when you have no idea how many you're going to sell. Again, this is really a clothing brand. This is Mark's kind of lifestyle brand going above and beyond to do this rad fucking thing. And it just breaks my heart when I see people just shitting on it. So pissed that they missed out all this. I mean, it's sold out. I understand that. But they're making more. Literally, Mark said they will make 10,000 more if there are 10,000 folks who didn't get it. So that being said, if you missed out on the first 50, which I know quite a few folks did, 
Make sure you pay attention to HowMyNameIsMark.com. I will try to plug that. They've already ordered another 100 more. So you're going to get one. It may just be an extra month or two. And I'm sorry. I'm a little cranky. I'm low on sleep. I haven't slept well the past month. I haven't had any popping curbs time. It just kills me when I see people mouthing off in the comments. It's such a bummer, man. It really is. I run stuff like this with other companies, with other aspects, putting together limited edition, rad items, and no matter what you do, people are always going to complain. I will put out a signed baseball card. I'll get it signed in blue. I'll launch it. People will bitch that it should have been in gold. I will price something at $75. People will say it should have been 60. I mean, I just don't understand it. We're all probably mid 30s plus. There's no reason to be so hateful in the comments, especially when they have been transparent throughout this whole process and are assuring you that you will get one. So it's all good. You know, I understand being a little bummed. Maybe you missed out on the first wave, but do not go into the comments and shit on folks. Try to be respectful. It amazes me when I look through these comments and I don't see any that say, hey, Sorry, I was working when it dropped, you know, really bummed I didn't get one. Are you guys going to make more? I mean, approach things respectfully. I just don't understand it. Off my soapbox for now, but got to say, I got one. I'm stoked. Can't wait to get it in. It's supposed to come in in mid-April. I'm sure a lot of folks uh, like myself, I know Alan Corona got one. I'm sure there will be tons of rad pictures, videos. Um, and again, if you missed out and you want one, you're going to get one. So it's all good. Um, that happened. It's out. And there are more on the way already. It did end up coming with a gig bag that has the octopus embroidered, which is rad. Um, and the price point ended up being $1,270, which is right in line with what signature models typically cost. I mean, the uh, the flea signature model, I think is $1,500 these days. I mean, I looked, a fucking Squire is like 600 bucks these days. I mean, everything's just gone up. So, you know, people are trying to do rad stuff. Um, again, just try not to be so rude. I don't understand why people are so hateful, um, especially when you're trying to get something. So um, anyways, let's keep it moving. So the next thing that had happened, and we were looking forward to this, is Avril Lavigne has a new album, and this dropped on DTA Records, already number one instantly the day of. And uh, Mark is on a song. So he's on a song called All I Wanted, which is rad. I mean, in, we've had a couple features from Mark recently. And every time I hear one, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't wait for, for new Blink and new, a new album from these dudes because, I mean, they're just crushing it. Travis is absolutely crushing it. I just can't wait to see, you know, what they end up doing on the next release. So huge congrats to, to, to Avril and to Travis and DTA. I mean, just absolutely killing it um okay that's kind of where we needed to be getting caught up on things now a couple days ago um was the one and only matt skiba's birthday sent him a birthday text got a reply back no big deal um as i mentioned earlier i haven't had time to even begin to think about the pod or what the next episode or anything would be and at that time as i was wishing him a happy birthday i was thinking you know what I am so appreciative of this dude and what he has done and stepped in graciously with my favorite band and they have so many fucking good songs. I'm actually genuinely curious to hear what is the favorite Skiba song with, with, you know, since he's been in Blink. And so I posed a question, made a little graphic, got a little creative. I'm saying, what is your top three Matt Skiba songs with Blink? Okay. Now, the way I'm thinking about this, because I have to, otherwise it just becomes what is the best song of the Skiba era or what are the top three songs of the Skiba era? And that's not what I wanted this to be. I wanted this to be what are the top three songs where Skiba really just absolutely shines or are Skiba led that you can tell or, you know, a song that we just would not get if it weren't for Skiba stepping into blink. So I posed the question. And as always, uh, super appreciative of engagement. I got a ton of comments on it. I uh, actually ended up opening it up for folks to submit. Uh, if they wanted to be on the pod, you could record it as a voice memo, email it to 182newspodcast at gmail.com. And we're going to get to those a little bit later. Appreciate that. Had a handful of folks um, send those in. 
And by the way, if you ever want to, you know, get a comment on the pod or something like that, please, by all means, email me with uh, with a voice memo. It's really easy. Just pull it up on your phone, talk, email it. Boom, done. Um, so I opened it up and I'm really curious and we got a lot of answers. And, and today the point of this episode is I want to discuss ultimately, and, and you know, I'm going to make a, a game time decision here. I got to do top five. As I was going through these and I do my homework, um, you know, I listened to to all of the albums over and over, and I, I got my my top five. I'm going to have to go with five. So initially I did three. I can't do it. There's too many good songs. Um, so we're going to go through some of these with, with what you all had put in. We're going to get to the folks who had sent theirs in. Um, and then ultimately, I am going to count down my top five Matt Skiba Blink-182 songs. Now... Going back to the comment section. And as much as I don't want to do this, I feel like I got to do this. Okay. When I pose the question, what are the top three Matt Skiba songs? I know that no matter what, the Tom bots are going to come in and they're going to come in hard, folks. Very quickly, right away, what are the top three Matt Skiba songs? <laughs> None. <laughs> what are the top three Skiba Zero. The list better have zero. There better be zero on there since Tom left. I'm thinking, here we go again. Folks, doesn't this go back to, like, kindergarten? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Okay? Now, if you say it respectfully, I get it. It's all good. We can have conversations respectfully. And this is what just drives me nuts about really anything in the world these days where it's, I'm red, I hate blue, and I'm blue and I hate red, or this sucks and this is great, and nobody listens to each other, nobody has respectful conversations, they just shit on Twitter and then, you know, argue about it later on, uh, knowing damn well, if you were actually in front of these folks, you would never say it to their face, um, but that's neither here nor there. Now... You all know me. I'm incredibly fair to all these dudes. I love all these dudes. And more importantly, I am 100% down with everybody doing whatever the fuck they want that makes them happy. And for that very reason, I fully support Tom and whatever he's doing. I fully support the Blink dudes. Hell, I fully support Scott, whatever he's doing. Okay, you guys know this. I'm fair to all these dudes. Um, you know, they're. Their band and, and their art has had a huge impact on my life, as is yours. So, you know, I understand in some capacity where some folks are still maybe a little bummed that Tom isn't in the band. However, let me reiterate, Tom left Blink twice, okay? It's been six, seven years Everybody's happy now. Everybody's cordial now, okay? I love Tom. I have been a huge supporter of Tom since the very beginning. He's one of the reasons I picked up a guitar, fully support to the stars. I have read Poet Anderson, okay? All of them. I have all his books. I've read them all. So when people try to out Tom bot me, I come back with, have you read of Nightmares? And if you haven't, then get off my lawn, okay? Nobody loves Tom more than me. I have more Tom content on the YouTube page than any other member, to be honest. So you already know I'm going to stick up for Tom and, and everything. But at the same time, I would hope that at this point in our lives and their lives, you would at least come to the rational <laughs> decision to be fair to folks and respectful to folks. So... I understand if it's in good fun and, you know, maybe you're just being bitter about it. It's all good. Um, but I feel like I need to reiterate kind of where we are and how we got here. And again, I didn't want to do this, but I feel like maybe now is the time to get into this before we pop into our top five Matt Skiba songs um, from really the new era. So I'm going to do a little analogy here for you. Okay. Because I don't know that everybody listening really knows where, how we got here. You know, maybe you don't know the situations or, or what actually happened or, or led up to these events. And, and not that I know every detail or we know every detail, 
But I think it's important to have a general understanding, um, you know, maybe to better understand both sides. And I think that is so important in anything that is, you know, divisive or, you know, causes two polar opposite sides. Try to understand each other. I don't understand why that's such a bad thing. You know, it's one of those things, and I've, I've said this before, and it, it really bums me out, is one of the most rad things about humans is that every single one of us is different. And instead of embracing that, people fucking hate it and have wars over it. And I just don't understand that. I never have. It's like, we're different. Let's talk about it. You know, I like candy. You may hate candy. I actually hate chocolate. But I understand if you love it, it's all good. Um, so anyways, to better paint this picture, and, and maybe this saves one Tombot from being angry in the future, and it'll be worth my time. I want you to think back, and I want you to pretend that you have a best friend, and you and your best friend right out of high school, the only thing you are passionate about is making the perfect pizza, okay? It's all you care about. It's all your best friend cares about. You guys hang out all the time. And all you want to do is create the perfect slice of pizza. You go over to each other's houses all the time. You're working on this pie. And you think you're kind of onto something. You start kind of coming up with a cool recipe. And you are grinding every day. You decide, you know what? This is what we're going to go for right now. I want to make the perfect pizza. And if we are really, really lucky, maybe we'll start our own little mom and pop restaurant, okay? That would be awesome. Maybe all we could ever have to do is just make slices of pizza and make people happy, okay? You're grinding on this. You're grinding on this every single day. You're taking slices of pizza you, over to, to, to bars. You're hanging outside. You're handing them out for free. You're dropping them off all over, just trying to get your, your name out there, trying to get your pie out there. And you love it, and it's all you want to do, and it's so much fun, and it doesn't matter if you're making any money. It's just what you want to do, and you want to make the perfect pizza, and you want to start your own little restaurant. And your family's helping, and your sisters are helping, and you've got everybody on your side. Your friends are pulling for you, and you're slowly kind of building it up. And it starts with a couple friends who think your piece of pizza is pretty good. And then it starts venturing out, and you got a couple strangers who are like, oh, that, yeah, that's a pretty good fucking piece of pizza. One day, you finally work up enough and, and you save up enough and you've got enough money um, to, to open your own mom and pop restaurant. And you start with one and you're so fucking proud of it. Cheshire Cat. And people are starting to notice. You're starting to get locals. They're popping in. They're digging it. You got some folks out of town who are kind of checking it out. I'm like, oh, this is, this is pretty good. And you just think you've made it. But that's not enough. You want to keep going, of course. This is your dream. This is all you want to do with your life. You and your friend are just working on the perfect piece of pizza. And you keep going. And you keep building on your menu. And you keep building it up. And all of a sudden, you've got a couple more restaurants opening up. And people are starting to hear about you. Now you've got one in Northern California. You've got one in... Southern California, you're expanding a little bit. All of a sudden, you keep grinding. You've came up with the perfect recipe. You've got your slice of pie that people just love. And it has opened the door for you to start a little mini chain across the U.S. This is, damn it, this is Dude Ranch. You've got it. And you've got some moderate success. You're still grinding, you know, but your hard work is starting to pay off. Now, around that time... One of your lead chefs, who you had brought in, Scott, has to leave for personal reasons. And you end up bringing in a new lead chef, Travis. And at that point, really, it's like the missing piece. And you guys perfect this menu. And everybody loves it, and it starts blowing up all over, and people can't get enough of this piece of pizza, folks. You've got international folks wanting it. You're opening chains all over. You're traveling. You're shaking hands. 
You're passing out tons of free slices of delicious pizza, and people just absolutely are losing their mind over it. You have all of a sudden, in a matter of a couple years, reached a level of pizza fame and monetary gain that you never would have thought was possible. And in fact, things are going so well that you bring in that lead chef as a third partner. So you're running it. You, your best friend who built this from scratch, and your new lead chef, Travis. And you guys are just sitting pretty. Everybody loves your pizza. You're traveling all the time, making tons of money. You're taken care of. Your family's taken care of. And after about four or five years of that, corporate comes to you. They want to open up, you know, a hundred more restaurants and they want you to sign up for, you know, an extensive travel schedule, running around, meetings all day. Um, and one of your partners comes to the board meeting and says, look, I, you know, I don't know that I want to sign up for this. I mean, this is everything we ever imagined. I've got a young family. I've got kids. Like, I, I kind of need a break. And the other two are thinking, dude, we just, we, we are on top of the world. We are like battling it out with Pizza Hut and Papa John's right now. We can't quit right now. Are you kidding me? This is, this is everything we had ever hoped for. We have employees all over. We have people relying on us. We cannot just up and quit right now. We love this. This is the life that we work so hard for. We started out in a fucking garage making this piece of pizza. And here we are with international locations all over. People can't get enough of us. And you just don't want to do it right now. And this is where you got to think. You got to put yourself in each of these situations. Me, I'll tell you right now, if, if I had all the money and maybe I was just a little burnt out on the daily grind of the pizza business and I had a one or two year old kid and I had been grinding my ass off for damn near 10 years at that point, you know, maybe you want a break. Maybe you don't want to be on a bus in Japan for a week away from your family. On the other hand, if you think of the other two co-owners, well, they have every right to want to continue that. In fact, they're majority ownership at that point. So you start thinking about it. But ultimately, heads butt, and there's a, there's a meeting, a very important meeting, pops up on your calendar unannounced. And ultimately, you have a decision to make, and you say, look, I'm kind of done for a while. Let's take a break. And the other two at that time, maybe not their idea, maybe not how they foresaw things happening, but they agreed. And they say, all right, you know, I guess this, I guess this was a good run. Uh, let's just stop. And you stop. And you shut down the restaurants. Everything you had ever dreamed for, unfortunately, kind of just comes to an end. Now, maybe you're happy and can live, you know, life how you want with your family nearby, out of your home. Maybe you are gutted because everything you worked up, worked so hard for, for your whole life, really just came to a screeching halt, almost out of your control. So think about these things. Think about the emotions that go into this from each side. Think about the lives affected. And try to really put yourself in each other's shoes. And this is where, as rational human beings, I would hope that you can totally understand both sides of these things. And it doesn't just stop there. So during that time, you know, you shut down the huge chain, okay? Unfortunately, it, it's just not going to work out. It, it, you have to let people go. You shut it down. Now, after a couple months, you don't really know what to do with yourself. And the other one doesn't really know what to do with himself. And so you start up kind of a smaller little pizza chain. And the menu is a little different. Angels and airwaves. And the other one doesn't really know what to do with his life because all he's ever known is pizza. 
and the restaurant business. So what's he do? He starts up another one. And the recipe is just a little different, but it's got, you know, it's got a lot of the original stuff in there. Plus 44. And you kind of go with that for four or five years. And, you know, maybe you're happy with it. You know, ultimately a part you never fully achieve what you did together, but you're still doing what you love. You're still, you know, working, you're still able to provide. And because of all the hard work you did prior, you know that you're taken care of. So that's good. You don't talk to your former best friend for five years, four or five years. Okay. You guys were inseparable. You built up this beautiful thing that changed so many people's Friday nights going out to get pizza. Some of the best times of their lives are in your restaurants with their friends, drinking beer, singing karaoke, and eating that goddamn piece of sausage pizza. Okay? For whatever reason, you all cross paths again. You, you catch up. You know, you guys were best friends. You know, how's it going, man? We haven't talked in five years. And lo and behold, it kind of comes up, you know, we had, a, we had a beautiful thing. We really did. And people loved it, and we loved it. And really, the time apart has made me realize that maybe we should try it out again. And everybody agrees, and everybody's stoked. And you reopen the restaurants. You got some upgrades. The menu's a little different. You got some really good new breadsticks. You've modified the cheese sauce. And people love it. Everybody's back. It's almost like you never closed the others. And you keep rolling with that for a couple years, a couple years. And after three or four, corporate comes to you and they're like, you know, we need to kind of come up with some new ideas. We need to, you know, get out internationally again. We need to, we need to get basically another three-year commitment from you all to be the face of this and go out and do this work uh, and meet all these people. And it's going to start in January. And two-thirds of the owners are like, fuck yeah, I've been waiting forever for this. This is awesome. And the other one is kind of, I don't know, you know? During this time apart, I've kind of learned to, to work on my own, and I don't know if I have the time. I'm interested in other things. And you're like, all right, let's try it next year. You know, let's, let's take some time. I understand you've got other, you've got other companies. Everybody's doing their own thing. You know, let's try, it. Let's try this next year. Okay. Next year rolls around, ready to send you off to Japan to start opening up new restaurants. Nah, I, I don't know if I've got the time right now. I just don't. You know, I'm finding it really hard to commit. Three or four years of that happens. And it gets to the point of where two-thirds of the ownership, for all intents and purposes, say, look... We love this fucking restaurant, okay? This is all we have ever wanted to do. It's all we want to do. We love it, man. People love it. We want to do this. Are you in or not? We've put this off for a couple years. We've got to do this, like, next month. <laughs> next year for sure. And ultimately... You know, depending on whose shoes you put on at this point, think about it. It's like, nah, I, I can't commit. I'm sorry. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Okay? These are weird, awkward life situations where folks have to look in the mirror and say, what do I want to do with my life. And unfortunately, in some of these situations with musicians and with bands and such, I mean, it takes commitment from labels, from for tours, you know? I mean, essentially, as you all have heard, these are three-year cycles for the most part. So put yourself in, you know, one owner's shoes and, you know, you're looking back and essentially, you know, you've accomplished everything you ever wanted to accomplish. You took a break. You did it. 
And at this point in your life, you're kind of interested in other things. You've got other folks relying on you with smaller companies. You're really passionate about completely different things. And you don't really know if you can commit to two, three years of this. On the other side, you've got two folks who that's all they want to do. And so here we are in late 2015 and things happen again. And ultimately, a decision has to be made. Okay. And so you on one side start thinking, you know what? It's not happening. I can't do it. And the other two at that point in time decide, okay, well, if that's the case, then we are going to continue this. And that is a difficult decision that those two had to sit down and discuss. And we are likely going to have to bring on a new head chef. <laughs> and a couple months go by, and that's what ultimately ends up happening, okay? Now, on one side, the co-owner at that point, who's no longer involved, is kind of free. Go do what you want. You know, and that takes courage and major balls to turn that away and say, you know what, I'm done with this huge su successful thing for now. And, you know, while I appreciate what it has done for me and my family and my life, and I know I would never be where I am if it weren't for this beautiful thing, and I love every single thing that it has given me, I'm going to try different shit. And I'm sorry, guys. And on the other side, you've got two who know how beautiful this thing is and want to continue doing it because it makes them happy and it makes other people happy. And they decide we're going to do it and we're going we're gonna to look for a different chef. Ultimately, they go out, they recruit this other chef who was pretty renowned in the pizza business, okay? Ran his own chains, not at the level that yours is at, but, you know, Nice, solid mid to upper tier. And you bring him in and you sit him down and you say, man, we need your help, honestly. And you're the only person who could do it. You know, we want you to join this. We want you to join our pizza chain. And we understand, you know, that you have yours. But this is kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity and we need you, buddy. You know, is that a yes or no? And then that person has to decide thing. I mean, it's crazy what all goes into these things, okay? And ultimately, that chef agrees. And now you basically have a new era of the company. And where I'm getting at with this is the new company launches a couple new restaurants, they still have the old menu. You can still go get your trusted goddamn sausage piece of pizza that you love so much and that you have loved since 1994. It's still there. You can go buy it at any time and enjoy the shit out of it. But they also got some new stuff on the menu. And there's folks from all over flocking in, trying this stuff having a great night out with their friends and family at these locations that would not have happened if it weren't for that other chef agreeing to come in, stepping in gracefully, not touching the old menu, understanding that folks enjoy that old menu, but coming up with some fun, unique, rad new items and providing that for a whole new generation, potentially, of folks to come in and enjoy what was built up. And there's nothing wrong with that. And what I want to tie this in with is the reason that I am so grateful for Matt Skiba and all these dudes, but particularly in regards to this example in this era, is I have countless great fucking memories of the last six years. Friends I would have never have met. I have trips I would have never have been on. Memories that would never have happened if it weren't for Matt Skiba 
taken that meeting with Mark and Travis at Crossroads, flat out telling them they are fucking crazy. There's no way this is going to work. But overcoming that fear and agreeing to step in to our favorite band in the world to the point of where at their very first show, he was so nervous and knew what he was up against. He was physically ill, okay? He said this. He was vomiting before the show. And he stepped in gracefully, and he has provided all of us with some rad fucking experiences over the past six years that would not happen with this, without this dude and without him agreeing to do this and really putting his other band on hold to gracefully step into this one. So when people shit on the new era or Skiba or whatever, I think it's just ridiculous, to be honest. You know, why, even if you don't like the music or it's just not for you, or maybe you think there's just something missing, you know, we're all adults now. I just want people to be happy and do whatever the fuck they want that makes people happy. And I got to be honest, you know, tying back into how I started this, this conversation, you know, I've had a terrible month, really, a terrible month. Honestly, worst month of my life, hardest month of my life. And my wife asked me the other day, she said, what makes you happy? You're never happy. And the sad part is it took me a second to think about that. And I didn't really know. And ultimately, when I look back at, you know, the past five, six years, some of the happiest moments in my life, if not the happiest, are when I'm at a Blink show or when I'm listening to new Blink music. And it's for reasons like that that I will be forever, forever grateful to this dude and these dudes for the impact that they've had on my life. And even if it's just a small amount of happiness here or there, it's happiness. And it's little moments of it that would not exist without these three continuing Blink-182. And again, you know, I can't thank these dudes enough for, for what they've done. And I would not have this pod. I wouldn't be talking to you all right now. You wouldn't be listening to me right now. None of this would be possible without Matt. So if you're on that side of everything sucks, you know, I hope that maybe this perspective changes at least one of you into a more respectful tone. Um, you know, life's short. I think we're all kind of realizing that, especially with, with Mark coming down with cancer in the last year. It really puts things in perspective, you know. That, thank God he beat it, and we're going to get more blink, hopefully, at some point. Um, but this is why, you know, I really want to encourage you all to, to just be respectful to folks and understand that people are different. And, you know, I'm so happy with where we are. Tom's happy. Um, Mark and Travis and Matt, everybody's happy in Blinkland. Everybody's doing their own thing and successful in their own right. We've got new angels. We've got, you know, new Blink in the past couple of years. Life's too short to be bitter and shitty in the fucking Instagram comments. So um, that's kind of my, my pizza example on Blink. I kind of just freestyled a lot of that, and I think it came out kind of interesting. Hopefully, hopefully it made sense to some of you all. I thought that was kind of fun. So, okay. With that being said, I want to get into, finally, and that took longer than expected, so apologies. Um, let's get into the Matt stuff, okay? So, I had a bunch of comments come in. Again, I posed the question, what are the top Matt Skiba songs um, with Blink? And I wanted to get stuff where he shines, and I wanted to get stuff where he led, or you can tell, like, he totally brought this to the table, and, and this is a, a Skiba Blink song that we would not get if it weren't for this dude in Blink. So I'm going to go through these. I listen to California. I listen to Deluxe. My God, I love those albums. It, it had been probably a couple months since I had given those a full spin. I've been listening to a lot of different shit lately. Um... So I'm going to start with really what a lot of the comments were coming in with, and then we'll go through each album. And essentially, I went through the album, made some notes, 
and I kind of have my little verdict of what's moving on to the next round from each album. Okay. So let's start with California. So a lot of folks put cynical down. Now I love cynical. It, it kicked off, you know, that album with a punch. Um, it was one of the first clips we got of Matt and blink and I can still picture it. He's in a black jacket. He's got the long Brown hair over his eye and he's screaming, what's the point of saying sorry now? And it's gnarly. Um, and, you know, if I was counting down top songs of this new era, that might be might be up there top seven, eight ish. You know, I love that song. But here's the thing. Thinking about a Skiba perspective, it's hard for me to put this in a top five um, and originally a top three when really he he has like one line. <laughs> so, you know, my note on this is it, it's too short. I got a lot. I, a lot of you had this. I was actually really surprised. Um, but that's not going to make it to my next, to my next round. Um, the next one I had bored to death. I got this quite a bit. Now everybody loves bored to death. I mean, this kicked off the whole new era. Um, he has a, the second verse in there and, and I love his verse on this. I, I've always loved this line of his and it's, I have a meaning that I'll share that in my head is what I think it means. But he says, there's a stranger staring at the ceiling, rescuing a tiger from a tree. The pictures in her head are always dreaming. Each of them means everything to me. And the way I've always taken this is there's a stranger staring at the ceiling. I envision that as Matt. I, I picture that as Matt putting himself in this situation, and he, he's just a, the stranger in the room, you know, looking up, rescuing a tiger from a tree. And the way that I think of this is the tiger is blink. It's this big, powerful beast, but it needs rescued from something so simple like a tree or, you know, a member, <laughs> a guitarist. The pictures in her head are always dreaming. Each of them means everything to me. The way I, the way I picture this, and it almost got, you know, it almost uh, made more sense when the acoustic came out is I picture that as, as Blink or, you know, probably Mark. The, picture, the pictures in her head are always dreaming. Each of them means everything to me. And I pictured that as Mark always wanting to, you know, dream or, or want more Blink or, you know, push Blink forward or whatever. Each of them means everything to me. And in and, and the Bored to Death acoustic, he actually changes the lyric, which I love. He says, the pictures in Mark's head are always dreaming. Uh, and I thought this before Deluxe even came out, but it was interesting when, when that came out, which is from an acoustic performance, when they actually changed the lyric on that, I'm like, oh, you know, that kind of um, reinforces my thought process. So I'm always interested in the interpretation of lyrics. And actually, I'd kind of love to hear what you all think about that. Shoot me a, a message if you listen to this and, and that strikes a, a thought in your brain. Um, no Future was another one that was submitted pretty often. I think the bridge on that is killer. You know, I love, there's something that I want you all to, to pay attention to. His voice breaks on, I think it's the second time he does it in the in the bridge. He says, you know, where did you go? It kind of breaks right there. And they kept it in there. And I just love it. I just love hearing it. And it's kind of a raw take that they kept that I like. Um, Left Alone, okay. This is, song, this is a song that's so underrated in my opinion. And when California was being written and they were, you know, making a lot of songs over at Feldman's early on, this is one that they said, Matt just really took the wheel on. And it was one of the first ones where it was like, okay, step aside. Matt Skiba's in the fucking house. Okay. He took this. It's a fucking banger. I love it. It's a beautiful song. Um, Matt said early on that he thought this was the lead single. Like even leading up to like listening to it with folks from, from the record label and such, it was like, this is the one, uh, the only thing that matters. I talked about this on my most underrated blink songs episode. I love this song. I almost put it in my Instagram story the other day when I was listening to it, doing my homework for this episode, but I just love, I mean, the bass, when it kicks in, I think it's really uh, out of all the songs, probably it's, it's the most like dude ranch throwback punk, you know, banger, um, and I love when Skiba comes in someday, just yells it. And then the aspect that, you know, the story is is real. You know, he says, you'll go racing towards the kitchen, grab a knife, erase my vision. 
take my flat screen television and my paintings from Mar- by Marilyn Manson. And that's a true story. I asked him about it and that's, that's real. Um, the last one that I really had jotted down that a lot of folks had mentioned and that I think he really uh, shines on is San Diego. A lot of folks are huge on San Diego. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I hear that San Diego is the best song on California, which I like that song, but it has never been top four or five for me on that album. So uh, interesting to, to see that come in. And he does crush that. I mean, he does absolutely crush that song. However, my verdict from California, the two that are going to move forward that I took into consideration are Left Alone and The Only Thing That Matters. So that's where we're at on California, okay? Next, I went in order, and I like to do this, and I'm still the type that just listens to albums in full. I don't listen to just random singles here and there, typically. Um, I moved on to Deluxe. And for me, it's funny. You know, Deluxe technically has the full California track list on disc one, and then the Deluxe songs are bonus tracks on disc two. And, and in the band's mind... I truly think they think of these as almost B-sides or, or you know, uh, side cuts because they really didn't play a lot of them live. If any, I think they just played Parking Lot, to be honest, and that was at the Vegas shows. Um, and to me, I have always just thought of this as a separate album. I have never listened to the original OG Cali tracks on the deluxe disc or vinyl or MP3 <laughs> through Apple Music. When I listen to California OG, it's always... The original, and then I think of Deluxe, I swear to God, as just like its own album, and I never consider the first half. It's always just these additional tracks that we got. And I love these. I mean, it's darker. The artwork reflects that. Um, I got quite a few from this, and to be honest, this is where I feel like they let Skiba a little loose on, on some of these, whereas on the first album, you know, maybe it was kind of easing him in. Deluxe, he's got some tracks on here where he absolutely shines. So I got uh, I got this one quite a bit. Parking lot, you know that's how Deluxe kicks off. Um, this is where we get yelling Matt Skiba, and I love the Chicago where he just yells out ten bucks to get down there and I'll find you. Um, parking lot's a banger, you know that's a good one. So I gave that some strong consideration. Uh, Misery, I fucking love this song. And this is another one that made my my top 10 most underrated Blink songs. And, you know, his, there's a halo in the distance. And the way he screams there, tore apart like the broken hearted. So good. Oh, my gosh. So you can see where I'm going with that one. Um, another one that I don't think really gets enough credit is Hey, I'm Sorry. And interestingly enough, I remember a long time ago, there was a podcast, I think it was Mark's podcast, actually, when he still had it going. Um, John Feldman was on early on in the California sessions, and they were talking about the original songs that they had written um, prior to getting in the studio with John. And Hey, I'm Sorry is the only one that really moved forward and they kept working on in some capacity and made the, and made the album. So it was a bonus, uh, J- a Japanese bonus track for the OG California, and then they put it on Deluxe, which I'm glad they did. And I think this one, I really get, you know, we get we get low voice mat, which we don't get a lot in, in Blink. It's interesting because, you know, traditionally, Mark always has, I mean, that super low, recognizable, beautiful voice. And then we had kind of Tom's higher pitch, and that's why it worked. You had opposites. And so when you get Skiba into Blink, you know, you don't, you like the contrast there. You don't necessarily want them both being low. However, um, you know, Skiba, I like low voice Skiba. He's got a beautiful voice. And so when I heard this, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a really pretty song. Um, and to me, I really get more vibes of where Skiba was with The Secrets at the time. He had that album come out really right when he had joined uh, Blink to perform at Music. A couple months later, he had that Cuts album come out, Matt Skiba and The Secrets. You should listen to it. And I really get vibes from that. So, hey, I'm sorry, really, I think is a nice representation of of where they were right at that time, you know, before they got into the studio and started trying to hone in on, okay, what is this new Blink sound? Okay. So, you know, that's, I mean, I think that's a solid song with both of them for sure. Now, one of the first times I remember when I just heard uh, Skiba just totally get 
unleashed and let loose and and just you know do your thing and take the reins and and have fun was last train home and i remember when this song came out it was just like holy shit this is the mad skiba we have been waiting for in blink and you can tell i mean this is a song of his it's eerie it has all of his vibes in it 100 percent um I love I love his line. The way I feel inside is worse than poison. It's just ah, uh, and the way that snare comes in, man. Okay, that's up there. So I got that quite a bit. I mean, a lot of folks had that as number one, number two of their top Skiba songs of all time. Um, Wildfire. I got this one quite a bit, and I was kind of surprised on this one. This this one kind of struck me as a little odd, almost like cynical, because I don't think Skiba's in it enough. So it's tough for me to name like a pure top five Skiba song or something when, yeah, I mean, he's he's got the bridge, great bridge. And then I love the ending where it's the underdogs came home. You know, I get it. And that song's a banger by all means, but uh, I don't think that one's moving forward for me. Um, six, eight. Okay. This song and, you know, fun fact, this song was actually originally called Rushing Rivers, which if you listen to the chorus, you should know why. Um, this is a song that they actually had done for California and it didn't make the album, which is just crazy to me. But I guess when you think about it's a little bit darker, it's certainly heavier. Um, you know, maybe it just didn't fit in with the sequencing there. But I love 6 8. Okay. Now, the bridge on that is absolutely killer. And then I think what a lot of people just love about this one for sure is Skiva's just screaming in the background, you know this song needs some fucking personality. And I remember when it first dropped, people were trying to figure out like, what is he saying? It was kind of hard to figure out what he was saying in the back. Um, and then once you know it, you can't really unhear it. So yeah, I mean, that's that's a great example of, of a song that, I mean, I'm just forever grateful of this new era because that's one of my favorite Blink songs. Um, and then one that nobody mentioned I don't think was the Bored to Death Acoustic, which I mentioned uh, previously in regards to to the lyric change. But, uh, you know, low key, I think that's just such a beautiful rendition of that song. And whenever it comes on, I can't help but but keep it on and just listen to it and enjoy it because it's just such a pretty song and you don't really hear the acoustic version that often. So um, from Deluxe, here's my verdict. We're going with Parking Lot. That moves forward. We're going with Misery. We're going with Last Train Home. And we're going with 6-8. Okay, those are the ones moving forward from Deluxe. Now, I move on to nine, okay? And this is where, <laughs> this is when I realized, I'm like, this is too fucking hard to do three. I'll tell you that much. Nine kicks off, first time. I love this song. I mean, to me, this is, I mentioned it before, to me, this is like, the epitome of what I want in current era Blink. I mean, it is take off your pants and jacket vibes, but it's modern production and it's just so rad of Mark and Skiba back and forth. So first time is very high up there for me, but you know, he, he kind of just has his verse, you know, first time on the blanks off, she's paranoid, trying to make up feel sad, set it out wrong. I just love it when it comes in there. Um, the, the first track that we get that, you know, really is just obvious is Matt's is Dark Side. And this is one that is so much fun and it's so different and it's so unique. Uh, they were playing this live. Mark has said that Skiba just fucking crushed this. Um, so Dark Side was on a lot of your list. I mean, probably I'd say 70 or 80% of the comments I saw Dark Side was on for sure and rightfully so. Now, I remember listening to Nine for the first time and when I got to Black Rain, I was just like, holy shit. Like, they gave Skiba a song here. And obviously, I mean, this has Matt Skiba written all over it. Completely different to anything we've ever heard from Blink before. And I applaud them for, you know, the, the whole thing about Nine is anything goes. And this goes back to uh, early on in, in the interviews for, for the Nine uh, production cycle and such. Mark had mentioned, uh, you know, it's really like Untitled. And people took that totally wrong. They thought that it was going to sound like Untitled. And what Mark meant by that is 
anything goes. There's no bad ideas. Whatever you got to the table, we don't have to stick to a particular, you know, theme or sound. It, we can be all over the place. And, you know, I commend them for doing that. And I love Nine because of that, um, because it really has something for everybody on it. And, you know, Black Rain is something where, I mean, good Lord, that is Matt Skiba all the way. Now, another song <laughs> um, that when I put on for the first time, I was just absolutely blown away by and still am to this day is No Heart to Speak Of. OK, when you listen to that, oh, my God, I just remember thinking, holy fuck. Like, this is one of my favorite Blink songs of all time. This is one of my favorite songs of all time. This is amazing. And if you didn't think they had let Matt Skiba loose by that point in listening to Line uh, on Nine, you knew it by the time you got to this song, for sure. Uh, another one that I got actually a handful of times, and I was kind of surprised by it because I don't listen to this song a ton, um, is on some emo shit. So, you know, I, I still listen to Nine. It's still in my CD player. At this point, I feel like I'm just going to keep it there forever. Um, and I got this quite a bit. And, you know, I went back and listened to it from this perspective of what is Skiba doing? You know, what has he brought into this? And, you know, I got to give it to him. Like, Skiba does fucking crush that. Like, um, you know, the, I love where they say forgive and forget as long as I live my life. You know, and that... Uh, you know, the, the solo in that, I feel like, is a true, like, Matt Skiba-sounding solo going back to maybe, like, The Secrets or something. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. That was a good call, and and probably if I would have came up with this list off the top of my head, um, I don't think I would have jotted that one down right away. Um, Hung Over You. This is another one, just, like, on some emo shit. I was surprised that a lot of folks were were putting that down, and I kind of had to go listen to it again with, with that in mind. And, uh, you know... It's it's a great song. You know, I love where he comes in. It was just one time, one time. And then that chorus, I think, is probably why a lot of you all are listening, list, listing that as your favorite because, you know, he just comes in powerful. It feels like last night you came over with my terrible rendition. So um, where I'm at on nine, and, you know, don't sleep on Remember to Forget Me. People sleep on Remember to Forget Me, and that's a great fucking song and a killer way to end the album. Um, however, there are clear, clear Skiba songs in this equation right now. There are certain ones that just have to move forward. Um, the verdict on Nine is Dark Side, Black Rain, and No Heart to Speak Of. Okay? So to reiterate, at this point in time, what has moved forward for me is Left Alone, The Only Thing That Matters, Parking Lot, Misery, Last Train Home, 6-8, Dark Side, Black Rain, and No Heart to Speak Of. Okay? Now, at this point in time, I've kind of gone through my quick notes, you know, taking into account the comments that I got on social media. At this point in time, we have a handful of clips from folks who sent in their recordings and I am going to plug those in right now, and we will follow up on each of those, and then I will end the episode by listing my top five. So this first clip, uh, this was sent in from my buddy David Salis. And for those of you who have seen Mark's streams where he's been playing bass, um, that beautiful Alan Corona bass that's kind of light bluish with the dark purple and has rad drawings all over it, David, I call him David, David is the one who designed that. It's really rad. And you know those clips that uh, people keep sharing and asking me about if I think Mark's bass is at Travis's studio? That's the bass. So David is a really rad fellow. I've mentioned it before. You know, I have a couple podcasts with Alan Corona discussing his creation process of these bass guitars, as well as an episode of David, who you're about to hear, and Alan going over the entire process of how they designed that guitar and made it and got it to mark and all that stuff. So check that one out if you haven't. But anyways, uh, here is David with his top Matt Skiba songs. Hello, Bobbin. How's it going, man? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I guess my top three of uh, Skiba songs. Uh, in other specific order, I will go with parking lot from the deluxe uh, california uh i will also add no heart to speak of because it's just crazy and great 
and finally i will go with last train home also from the deluxe i think uh that is my favorite ones so yeah <laughs> very respectable david I agree with you. I think maybe we'll see uh, a couple of these here in a little bit. We shall see. He's got Last Train Home in there. All right, next one. This comes from Brandon Casorla, a.k.a. Pizza Vinkman. Let's see what Brandon has to say. Okay, top three Skiba songs. Uh, number one, I'd have to say, is Bored to Death. And this is because I know typically a debut single from an album feels like it's overplayed. It starts to get skipped over on repeat listens for some people. I think that this track's important to call out as a favorite because it's the first time most of us Blink fans would hear how Skiba sounded as a member of Blink. It really sets the tone for our expectations and, in my opinion, really solidified him as a solid addition to the band. My second favorite, I'd say, is Parking Lot. I would say Parking Lot is number two because the Skiba-isms that are injected into this track, like uh, mentions of Chicago, really give it that Skiba vibe. I think this track is super relatable to anyone who grew up going to shows and then having your venue all of a sudden paved over or changed into something else in the future when you look back on it. Uh, my third favorite, Black Rain. Uh, jumping to the album nine, Matt's now an established and contributing member of Blink. And I think this track really stands out as the most unleashed Skiba influence track uh, of his contributions to Blink with the dark sounding organs in the intro to the feelings he describes of pain and loss throughout the lyrics. Well said pizza. I'm impressed. He went in depth there and, and I totally agree. I mean, bored to death. That's the first song we heard that kicked off this new era. It's actually kind of funny in hindsight when that, when that first dropped, people couldn't differentiate Mark and Matt at the time. I remember people were complaining like, which one is which? And it's so obvious now in, in hindsight, of course. Parking Lot, I mean, again, I mentioned that earlier, that totally seems like that's one where, where Skiba got his lyrics and input into it. And then Black Rain, as Brandon just said, I mean, that is just Skiba completely let loose, um, free at the rain. So yeah, appreciate you sending that in. Uh, that was Pizza Vinkman. He's, he's on the Hi, My Name is Mark Discord. Uh, let's see what Adrian Cibolo has to say. All right. Being a big fan of Nine and California, this was a super hard list to make. I love everything Matt has done for the band. All his parts in each song are amazing. So picking three, really difficult. I listed about 15 songs that could be my favorite Skiba song. But to narrow it down, we'll go run away, no heart to speak of, and blame it on my youth. Agree to disagree. Like I said, everything he's done is pretty much my favorite Matt Skiba song and Blink. So yeah, San Diego, Left Alone, Last Train Home, Home is Such a Lonely Place, Remember to Forget Me. The list goes on and on. Skiba's great. Love him in the band. Can't wait for a new album with this current lineup. Appreciate you for hosting the pod, Poppin' Curves. Y'all take it easy. Peace. Yeah, I appreciate that, Adrian. Thanks for sending that in and the kind words, of course. Uh, you know, I almost put Runaway on mine. Um, I like that you sent in some different ones. So blame it on my youth. I mean, no heart to speak of. I almost don't trust anybody who doesn't have that one at their top five at minimum. Uh, but I'm with you, man. You had about 15. I was probably in the in the 10 to 15 range initially before I really had to narrow it down. So that's cool that you put those on there. Yeah, I love I love Skiba's verse and Blame It On My Youth for sure and the chorus. And really that kind of kicked off this nine era, even though I don't know that it's the best representation of that entire album as a fool. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you sending that in. Next one is Dylan LaPassi. Let's see what Dylan has to say. My top three Matt Skiba Blink-182 songs are Sober, because it has a fantastic contrast between Mark and Matt's voices. And I know a lot of fans clown Matt for not having too different a voice from Mark, but I really feel like this song hits on true pop punk while having a little bit of that OG feel that is, you know, natured to Blink of the contrast between the two lead singers. Um... Next is The First Time, because it feels like a true Blink opening track. Uh, Matt's vocals go really high. I love sort of some of the high pitches and half screams he does. And it gives that take off your pants and jacket feel that we love so much from Blink-182. Last, and I don't even have to fucking explain it, no heart to speak of. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it, Dylan. I love it. Dylan's got me on first time for sure. And then I love the, uh, I don't even have to fucking explain it. No hard to speak up. 100%. Totally. It's interesting that you threw sober in there, though. I mean, I do like sober. I do like his his verse in that. And uh, I think it's autobiographical of when he used to, you know, ride and do the bike route. And I think he delivered newspapers or something at the time. So that's interesting. Um, all right. Last one. And then we'll get into mine. This is from previous podcast guest, Mike DeMonte. So I covered Ackline Trio and Mass Keep his career basically as long as I covered Blank as a music journalist. And they were always one of my favorite bands. I feel like uh, lately, I think Matt's starting to be utilized more in Blink. Um, as a lyricist, he's one of the best out there. And sometimes we hear that kind of shine through on some Blink songs. But today I kind of want to talk about um, three songs that are my favorite. Uh, Cynical, right off the bat, I think is a great way to kind of kick off that era. Uh, sounds like old Blink and um, Matt's, Matt's screaming in it, I think works really well. Second song, uh, Dark Side, uh, chorus is huge. And I feel like that's a song they should have made right from the start together as a band. Um, that may probably may be my favorite song, uh, uh, Matt Skiba era. And then finally, uh, I want to talk, the last song on here, that's my favorite Blink with Matt Skiba song, is Wildfire. Um, California Deluxe to me sounds like the direction that they should have gone from the start. To me, that's what Blink with Matt Skiba should sound like, is the Deluxe Edition, as opposed to regular California. First time I heard Parking Lot, I was like, ah, this is it. This is what they should sound like. And Wildfire to me basically just sounds like a, a perfect Blink song. So, you know, if you're a fan of Maskeva, Ackline Trio, or Blink, uh, check out my book, Hey Suburbia, that has interviews with Matt, Mark, and Tom. Cool, yeah, I appreciate the insight, Mike. Uh, Cynical, yeah, I touched base on it earlier. Amazing song, but it's just, I don't know, his part's so short. Dark Side, I mean, spoiler alert, I think that's kind of a no-brainer on, on most folks' list. Uh, Wildfire, again, absolute banger. I think it's super underrated, especially for Cali Deluxe. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if that's going to make my top five. Um, I just want to say, you know, thank you for everybody who who sent in their comments and who sent in their video clips. Mike does have a new book out that he mentioned. Hey, Suburbia, A Guide to the Emo Pop Punk Rise. Uh, I have read that. It's very interesting. And I learned a lot. So check that out. Mike's been on the pod before. He's really into the UFO side of things. So I need to get him back on the on the pod ASAP. Maybe as at least a, a UFO correspondent. So I'll holler at you, Mike. Appreciate it. Okay. The time has come. We have gone through the comments. You've had an angry pop and curbs. We are going to get into the top five Matt Skiba Blink-182 songs. Okay. Again, I do my homework on this stuff. Of course, I already know these songs by heart, but I went through them again just to make sure they were fresh on the mind from this perspective of what is Matt bringing to these? Is this something that, you know, really is a lot more him um, that kind of has his little special skiba sauce on it. So let's start at number five. I need a I need a drum roll here or something. Some sort of little audio cue. If anybody knows Travis, maybe I can get Travis to record like a quick little snare roll for me. That'd be rad. Get it on the pod. Maybe one day. Um, okay. Coming at number five. Let's kick it off here, folks. I'm going left alone. Okay. And I did not see this one on too many people's lists. And I think you're all crazy. This song really, I mean, why I like it so much is it kicked off really his footprint in Blink on California. I mean, he has said, Feldman has said, Marcus said, this is one of the first songs where like he just took the reins. Everybody got the fuck out of the way and said, let him do his thing. I'm going left alone. Number five. Okay. And again, originally I thought this was going to be three. It's too hard. I modified the rules. It's my podcast. We're going with five. Coming in at number four is Misery off California Deluxe. I mean, that is an incredible song, okay? His parts in it are just so eerie. I just love the way he carries the chorus. I'm going with Misery at number four. One of my favorite Blink-182 songs of all time, okay? Let's get into the top three. Insert that little Travis drum roll that I'll never get. I'm going with Black Rain. I don't think this one is a surprise to most. I think a lot of folks have this on their list. And honestly, if it came down to just pure Skiba, this might be number one on a lot of lists. I mean, this is one where if you listen to this, you know this song does not happen without Matt Skiba. Okay? Awesome song. As I mentioned earlier, totally different than anything we'd ever heard in Blink. And I appreciate it so much for that. Okay. Number two. 
I just mentioned this one a minute ago, Dark Side. I think this is an absolutely fun banger. It's fun live. It's different. I mean, his voice in it is incredible. Um, they have a lot of fun playing it. Mark loves this song, loves playing this song. So Dark Side is a number two for me, for sure. And I saw a lot of folks put that as number one, and I don't blame you. However, coming in at number one, and <laughs> I feel like this should be number one on everybody's list, to be honest. No heart to speak of. I mean, if you don't listen to that song and just hear this man's soul wailing out, go back and re-listen to it. Crank it up loud. I mean, right from the get-go, I was just absolutely shocked when this song came on and I was hearing it for the first time. And I love, I mean, the lyrics in this song. Oh, my God. Photographs of you are still haunting my halls still framed in blue, saying nothing at all. I mean, to me, that is so skiba and eerie. I mean, he's talking about basically a memory of someone, you know, say, for example, it's somebody you broke up with, but their picture is still in your living room or, you know, wherever, and it's just staring at you, saying nothing at all. I mean, that's some beautiful poetry. Sacrifice myself, leave me dead in the sun put it on a shelf, leave it there for everyone to see. I mean, oh my gosh. And then the way he follows that up, is that all you have? Is that all you have to say? I mean, think about the beautiful poetry and artistry and just his weird, eerie vibe that we love so much. Just talking about and the way I the way I interpret this is is kind of an, an ex or an ex lover or something. So photographs of you are still haunting my halls. So I envision in my head, he just broke up with this lady. There was a terrible breakup or something. Photographs of this person are still in his house, and they're sitting there, and he's you know maybe in a depressed state of mind or just you know bummed or whatever. And you're just sitting in a room alone, thinking about what just happened in your life or with this person. And you're just looking at this photo, and it's just staring at you, saying nothing at all. Sacrifice myself, leave me dead in the sun. So essentially, you know, getting thrown away. <laughs> Put it on a shelf. Leave it there for everyone to see. So you set that there, and then it just says, is that all you have? Is that all you have to say? Which is essentially nothing. And then the way that goes into the chorus, lie on the bad road, I mean, oh my. And I remember he was saying when they recorded that, he did it over a couple days and lost his voice. Two days of that in the studio, couldn't talk for a week afterwards because of what he put into that performance. And when you crank that up, if you can't hear that, oh my God. And I still love, I go back to, I think it was New Year's Eve and, and Mark was doing a stream and he was playing Blink. And this song came on and just the smile that came on Mark's face. And when he was listening to this chorus and Mark was so stoked and he was like, listen to his fucking voice. Listen to what this dude is doing right now. It's insane. To me, this is hands down the best Matt Skiba, Blink-182 song, one of my favorite Blink songs of all time. And I don't think it's a surprise that this came at the top of a lot of your list as well. And if we can get anything close to this in the future out of Skiba, oh my gosh. So that's it. That's my top five. So to reiterate, we've got Left Alone at number five, Misery number four, three Black Rain, two Dark Side, one No Heart to Speak Of which I don't think is too particularly surprising as a one, but it was a, an interesting you know, exercise to lay this all out, go through it one by one. Uh, I encourage you all to do the same. I would love to hear yours. You know, Let's engage in this and talk about it. This is fun to me. And uh, as always, I appreciate the engagement and all the comments and you know everybody who took the time to, to send theirs in and, and listen to this terrible podcast. So with that being said, 
Appreciate everybody hanging out today. Be sure to follow the pod at 182 News on Twitter, at 182 News Pod on Instagram. Uh, sorry for being a bit cranky today, but I've been stressed, so just had to let it out. But again, uh, nowhere I'd rather be than hanging out with you all right now. Feels good to get another episode out. Don't know when the next one will be, to be honest. I'll have to see. Um, but I hope everybody's staying safe out there, uh, kicking off the, the new year all right. Hope you got some fun stuff lined up in the next couple months. And I will talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>